I'm very much delighted to welcome today's preacher, Sebastian Tekanet. Father Sebastian Tekanet hails from the Ernagulam Angamali Archdiocese and served as the second PMI national coordinator. He took over the baton from Father Vorgis Kadiperi and led the ministry to its heights, especially to the CBCI recognition. He, uh, we studied together at uh, St. Thomas Apostolic Seminary and was uh, together working in the initial years of PMI. He was in the prayer group and uh, because of that, he, Sebastian, knows the pulse, the style, the spirituality, the methodology of PMI. He has many degrees like MA in Sociology, MSc in Psychology, MMAT and degrees in Hospital Administration and Human Resource Development. He was in the four of, he was in the fourth PMI National, it was in the fourth PMI National Gathering held in Mumbai in 1998 that Father Sebastian Tekanath was elected as a national coordinator. He led the fifth national convention in 1999 in Calcutta and the sixth in Hyderabad in 2000. On 24th August 2000, under his able leadership, PMI was officially recognized by the CBCI. Let us give our applause and appreciation to Father Sebastian for this great achievement. Hi, Father. Uh, congratulations for your hard work. He also spread the fragrance and the, the spirituality of PMI to many countries by participating in many international conferences convened by organizations such as Cure International, Prison Fellowship International, and ICC PPC. At present, he is the director of Saradi Movement, an organization founded by our founder, Father Vakis Kheridi, for the welfare of auto rickshaw and taxi drivers working under the Kerala Catholic Bishops Council. Dear Father Sebastian, most welcome to this online retreat of PMI. Uh, okay. Louder, so louder. Dear loving brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ. Uh, today, our topic is sin and repentance. Uh, we all are serving or rendering our service to a group of people who are branded as sinners or about whom we think that they have to repent on their sins because they are all caught in some wrong action or accused of some such actions. So dear brothers and sisters, as a prison ministry volunteer uh, from the very uh, the birth of the Jesus Fraternity or Prison Ministry India, I would like to share some of my experiences first. So I was uh, trying to share one of my experiences. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so while we were having our prison pilgrimage, so we were talking to one of the young prisoners. He asked a question like this. I think during this retreat, somebody, Father Kariperi or somebody else would have shared this. So can you give me a chance? Can you give me? Can you give me? A I want to renew my life, change my life, please. I was caught in a theft case and I was convicted and I was serving this the one and a half years the court gave me and 
uh, while I was in the prison serving my term, I made up my mind, I will not come again to the prison. And he completed his term and came out from the prison and he was telling with the tears, I was caught again. I don't know for what. Again and again I was caught and this is the fifth time I am in the prison. Only once I have committed a theft. So this is the, play, the condition of every prisoner in a, all over India, everywhere. These people, even if they want to change their life, even if they want to uh, repent on their sins, even, even if they know that they have done something wrong, convinced and repent on that uh, wrong action and they want to change, the system is corrupt. So they will be caught again and again up and down in the prison. So keeping this in our mind as volunteers of prison ministry, we have to think about sin and repentance. So as, as a national coordinator of prison ministry, traveling extensively in various states and prisons, I had met so many cases like this. So many young people like this. Innocent people, again and again caught and put into the prison. So another occasion, uh, during this prison pilgrimage in another prison, so why we were sharing with all the prisoners, one convicted prisoner, convicted for murder, so uh, please put your hands over my head and may just pray for us because I want to sleep. Sleep a night, a sound sleep. I had been here for many years as a convicted prisoner, but whenever I go to bed to sleep, you know, what you going to the bed means in the prison, you can imagine the bed. So uh, when I am going sleep, I try to sleep. The two children at home without any food, nobody to look after. The face of those two, my children come to my mind. Then I get up. Suddenly I get up. The screen of my mind. So I get up again. Then comes the man I killed. The pool of a blood. Pool of blood. I come to my mind. And again I get up. So this is repeated every night. So I can't sleep. This is haunting me. I'm really repent on my crime. I have taken one life which I cannot replace with anything in this world. But, Father, I want to sleep. I want to sleep. Just to pray over me. So this person also is repenting on his sin. The crime that he has done. But every day this is haunting the person. So keeping all these experiences in our minds, then we have to go to the prison and see these prisoners. As we have seen or heard that our Lord Jesus Christ, who was a prisoner and who had undergone all the physical harassments, mental harassments of the authority, of the, uh, the so-called uh, uh, government or the prison system and had undergone the capital punishment, convicted for capital punishment. And we know that he was an innocent prisoner. The judge himself tells that if I don't see any crime in this man, but at the end he says that take him and crucify him. 
when we go to the prisons because some reason because of uh, um, allegations or some other reason, uh, these illiterate people from the villages of our country so they don't know the law so you know you have heard the prison ministry knows very well sister karamalita who died who was a full time volunteer in bangalore central prison and uh, with her help continuous effort we have released during my time as a national coordinator hundreds of prisoners from bangalore central prison mainly the officers in bangalore so what she did how she could uh, release many prisoners so there are so many people inside the prison who are uh, caught in some petty cases so called small cases the maximum punishment may be if if at all it is proved they have done something wrong or uh, the maximum punishment they can get maybe one month two months or three months or a, a, a fine like 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees but these people don't know the law this is the, the situation and through the help of sister karmalita what we did we took the cases such petty cases and when we checked it they are in the prison more than the double time the maximum punishment they can get from the court if it is proved and convicted so such cases we took and brought to the notice of the court and we released so many hundreds of prisoners through maybe through two three years time so these are the people who are inside the prison and to with uh, i about the, those people we are talking about their sin their wrong doings so they are caught so i used to tell when i share uh, to the volunteers there are only two types of people in the world there are only two types of people in the world sinners sinners those who are caught sinners those who are caught by the law and put into the prison and the second category sinners those who are not yet caught caught by the law and those not yet caught people they are they are conducting the online retreats and i'm giving the talk so we are the people who are, we cannot say that we have not done anything wrong sometimes we cannot keep our right hand on our chest and say that i am perfectly okay i'm perfect i'm sinless we are also sinners so this awareness should be there when we go to the prison so i am talking giving this talk and sharing this uh, points keeping in mind that we are prison ministry volunteers and going to the prison and meeting the prisoners those who are accused those who are branded so that's why i am sharing like this so we are also sinners this should be in our mind when we go to the prison and meet prisoners that you have done something wrong and we you have to repent so sin so i think sister would you please keep the next slide from there so uh, forgiveness uh, this is uh, you know the famous picture of john paul second sin john paul second meeting the uh, the the personally in the prison who tried to kill him this is the forgiveness this is an example so go to the uh, next slide sister please go to the next slide so now let us uh, think a little more about the sin and repentance it's so both these points work together i don't separate uh, sin as a one compartment and repentance in one another compartment so we go together so sin both sin and repentance both transforms human person sin transforms the worst 
whereas repentance transforms the person to the best so sin transformed the person and those spoke caught by the law and put into the prison to the worst uh, situation of the life those who are in the prison and we are going to the prison as volunteers to tell them that this is not the end of life this situation is not the end of life but this can be a new beginning new beginning so convince them that this what you have done something wrong we can be you can change it only human person can change no animals person human person can change their life so sin is an attraction to the world sometimes uh, some attraction made these people to do something wrong uh, for a temporary or uh, a immediate uh, uh, benefit and that brought a tragic situation in their life the same way repentance is also an attraction attraction to god attraction to god and this attraction attraction to god god's love lightens the burden burden of the life all this burden that they are in their life can lighten their burdens by turning to god this is what we have to uh, say to the prisoners so uh, now another experience come to my mind while during our prison pilgrimage so in kerala uh, during the school picnic time those who are going to the major cities like uh, trivandrum trichur all these places sometimes the school teachers also school management take the children also to the prisons keeping in mind that this uh, seeing the prison prisoners in the prison cells may influence the students not to commit any sin with a positive thought they take the prisoners to the prison and show them the uh, cells that where the prisoners are kept so while we were having this prison pilgrimage once a prisoner told like this with a furious face and mind father these school teachers even sisters bring these children to this prison and they make a line in front of the cells and they go in front of our as those we are in the inside the prison if that time if i would have given a knife i would have stabbed that teacher or sister because we are not animals father in the cage we are human persons it is true no they are human persons they are not animals human persons with blood and feelings the same blood is running the same color of the blood which running in our in our own veins so they are human persons so whenever we go to the prison this should be in our minds they are human persons may be wounded may be innocent so this should be in our minds so when we again when we speak about sin and repentance as volunteers of prison ministry we have to see that so sister would you please uh, make can at the same time as volunteers as we go to the prison and see the brethren behind the iron bars how we are going to communicate with the with them about the sin and repentance it is very important and that is why i shared all these experiences it is also very important keeping in this in our minds that they are human persons and we have to speak from a practical sense how to bring these persons so please go to the next slide sister is yeah 
so this uh, the the wrong action they have done the sin they have done we say so made a big gap between god and the person who had done the crime so please next slide please sister yeah so we can say at the core what is sin sin is a rejection of god and the refusal to accept his love and this is what happened in the life of a person who commit some sin and this is what happened in a in the life of a prisoner uh, this is manifested in a disregard for his commandments then it is that means it is a breaking of the commandments commandments of the lord so i am just trying to give uh, from some reflections from the bible as why uh, from the, with these experiences i uh, go like this so it's a rejection of god's love any anyone who do something wrong is a rejection of god god's love and is the breaking of some commandments please sister next uh, uh, slide so normally we understand that sister some sin is more than an incorrect behavior being always late so it happens on the school classrooms students are late so it is not simply an incorrect behavior alone it is not a psychological weakness so uh, it is more than that it's not a simply psychological weakness or incorrect behavior so let us see what gospel says or bible says in the deepest sense every rejection something good is the rejection of good in itself the rejection of god so when i say that uh i want this particular thing for my benefit personal benefit it may be a, it can be a rejection of god god's love rejection of the good and accepting something wrong what is opposite to god's love please sister next so now let us see what word of god says about sin that is very important for us as uh, we go to the prison and meet prisoners as uh christ ambassadors of christ and representatives of christ so we read in the uh, psalms 42 says like this as the deer longs for streams of water so my soul longs for you o god my being thirsts for god the living god when i can i go and see the face of god the actually this is the innermost desire of every human person also those who are in the prison this big uh, gap or uh, emptiness is there in the mind in the life of a prisoner when we commit some something wrong it also happens in our life our own personal life every human person because we are created in the image and likeness of god we belong to god we know the famous words of saint uh, saint augustine i am restless unless i rest you o god so this is the innermost desire of every human person every human person when we also when we do something wrong this is Uh, this kind of restlessness is there within us and this restlessness we see when we meet the prisoners we meet the prisoners we have seen so many you also may have so many experiences they always they their head is down even we meet some prisoners for the first time they even not even to look at us their Uh, head they always keep down because they have this feeling 
they feel that they lost something very very much needed to them so he says that but in the re in reality what happens st paul says for i do not do the good i want but i do the evil i do not want this is what happens in our life if we talk to prisoners i have many experiences uh, uh many many prisoners i met when i visited many prisons so they feel that actually father i never thought of doing this crime actually i have done but never never i want to do it again i never stand asked what is the greatest commandment and jesus asked him to tell what is the commandment hmm? so what comes out of a uh, so mark 7 20 23 says that what all things comes from within that is defiles so uh, please sister next uh, you please just this way explain next slide please yeah christian life is a war against sin so this is uh, what uh, uh, st paul says no i do always what i don't want to do so christian life is a war against sin it is a continuous fight against sin so this is what we have to practice in our own life always vigilant because always sin is there at our door step the temptation is there at the door step of every individual so we have to be very cautious very vigilant so it is a, actually it's a fight against the sin and then please sister next so this is what i want to tell you now so what is the greatest commandment the young person came to jesus christ and asked what is the greatest commandment and jesus asked him tell me what you have learned you shall love the lord your god with all your heart all your being with all your strength with all your mind and uh, and your neighbor as yourself this is the greatest commandment and we all know that and he replied jesus this is answer asked by jesus christ and uh, and answer the young person who came, pharisee who came to ask with the greatest commandment and jesus asked uh, replied him you have answered correctly do this and you will live so that means so we have to love god the, with the full being our own full being we have to love the same way as you love yourself you have to love your neighbor this is the commandment the only commandment anything against this is sin and this is what happens in our life and this is what happened the life of the prisoners so then now present ministry is a special ministry different from all other ministries of the church we cannot compare any other ministry with the service inside the prison because we are seeing these people who are wounded who are rejected who are dejected by the society because of some wrong doing or some accusation against them people inside the prison are confined to the four walls they are branded people accused of some crime convicted of some crime general public look at them in a different way so it is not with the same attitude of the general public we go to the prisons because they are wounded people isolated people they are psychologically down depressed people they are with regrets because of the attitude of the society maybe they have their regrets and nobody believes them and that is what we we have our rehabilitation center is no we have to go to rehabilitation center when we started we have the 10 principles there 
uh, written there. It is nothing is locked there. So from the world of lock, they come to the world of no locks because we try to believe them because nobody in the world believe them. Suppose, just take an example. Suppose one of the thieves caught from our own neighborhood and he was in the prison and he was uh, maybe released on parole or he was uh, completed his term and come back to the village, to our own neighborhood. And we know that he is at home. What is what will be the attitude of the for the people around that place? So we will murmur that he is out. We will be more careful because he is a thief. He is out. So because we don't believe that person, sometimes he changed his mind and as I told the first example of the man, the young person that he wanted to do a new uh, lead a new life start a new beginning <coughs> in his life but we don't believe them so how can we they live a normal life uh, of the people those who are released from the prison so but look at ourselves we are also sinners as already mentioned before God our creator we can also we have to be more more kind enough the kindness of Jesus Christ himself so now these people those who are in the prisoners with the prisoners because we are also sinners we are not God so that we are going to the prison and bring them back to the society as normal human beings. You see this the attitude of St. Paul, no? We have the uh, small epistle we see in the Bible. We see in the Bible those who are repenting on their sins and coming back to the society, we should have the same attitude. The slave who are caught, maybe caught in the, uh, uh, run away from the uh, owner or the master and caught by the police and put into the prison and he was in the same prison where St. Paul was and he uh, preached the good news to the him and he was converted and he was uh, released and St. Paul sent this Onesimus whom we meet in the epistle of St. Paul to the Philemon. Onesimus. And he sent him back to the same Philemon from where he was run away and caught by the law and put into the prison. And he is sending with a letter, recommendation letter. What he writes, I am sending my own heart to you. This is the words that we read in the epistle of St. Paul. I am sending my own heart to you. Receive him as you receive me. Say, receive him as you receive me. You see, what a beautiful words. What a beautiful word of rehabilitation. Uh, ours we have kept in front of the prisons, central prisons, saying rosaries two times, three times, four times. Then they opened the doors for us, prison ministry volunteers. So we are going to the prison to tell the prisoners flee from sin as from a serpent that will bite you if you go near it. it is, its teeth are lion's teeth destroying the souls of men. This is what and we should be convinced of this. And this with this conviction we are going to the prisons. And that's what we are trying to do. So sister next slide. So so I am concluding my talk, small reflections.
I know that it is not very systematic. I was just trying to share some of my experiences together with some uh, connected with uh, our uh, gospel and Bible. So this is uh, what I am going to conclude with the, uh, the parable of the lost sheep. So one is equal to 99. I think during this retreat talks, uh, somebody has mentioned this lost sheep parable. Uh, especially Father Kariperi always used to tell this. So one is equal to 99. This is the math math mathematics of God. And that is why we are convinced of repentance. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. Acts 3.19 says that repent therefore and be converted and that your sins may be wiped away. So we are all volunteers of prison ministry have taken up a noble mission of Jesus Christ. The same mission that Jesus Christ started with. So who founded prison ministry means maybe this prison ministry India an organization started by our founder fathers. But prison ministry started by Jesus Christ himself on the cross taking the prisoner who was crucified with him on the right side, forgiving all his sins. So, he felt Jesus Christ understood that he is repenting on his sins when he, were, he asked we remember me when you are in your kingdom. And Jesus Christ forgave all his sins and took him with, the, with him to the paradise. And this is the ministry that we have taken up. We are continuing in the uh, maybe 1,400 prisons of our country. So uh, I'm very happy uh, to be part of this online retreat. I'm a volunteer for the last 34 years from the very beginning. And I'm so uh, happy to continue also now as a prison ministry volunteer because my I feel that my priesthood my occasion is founded on the basic principles of prison ministry, which I learned from our founder fathers, Father Vagis, Father Kodian, and all these people. I think this uh, online retreat will enrich you, all the volunteers. I am also happy to see some of my uh, old friends' uh, face uh, in this online retreat. Sister Fidelis, I saw Sister Mary James and many others are attending this online retreat. They are all, all good, actually all good resource persons also for uh, our ministry. So Father, thank you very much for giving me this chance to share these simple thoughts uh, for some time. I don't know whether uh, it is okay hearing for uh, or audible for you. Anyway, I tried my best uh, first time giving a talk like this on the online. So anyway, happy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sebastian. It was uh, very enriching and uh, very thought-provoking and enriching, inspiring. Thank you very much. Now I would like to ask you, what are you doing now? The present, uh, your present job says something regarding that uh, Saradi movement. That may be an enlightening uh, new idea for, uh, you can also extend the, your ministry to other states. Say something about that. Yeah. Very good, very good. Thank you, Father. Uh, Saradi is a term, uh, the, uh, the, the title of our organization or the, the name of our organization put by Father Burgis Kariperi. Uh, I am also privileged to say that uh, I was also one of the pioneers started this ministry with uh, Father Varghese Kariperi from the very beginning. Uh, we both together only uh, went to Father Bishop, Bishop Chakir to speak about uh, this ministry and uh, he only inspired for this ministry. So Saradi is a moment, it's called Help Line for uh, auto rickshaw taxi drivers. So auto rickshaw drivers in Kerala and all over India is the most unorganized people, daily workers, daily wage people, 
yeah their problem is that they get uh, maybe enough money for their to maintain their families but they have no savings because they get the money every day and spend it and no savings so what we do we try to organize these people in every auto rickshaw stand and taxi stands and uh, convince them that they are doing a wonderful service to society first of all is uh, they have a uh, low dignity of labor the society also in, in general public also have a low dignity about the service of the auto rickshaw drivers uh, so by general public consider that auto rickshaw drivers are not very good people they always charge more they always uh, cheat people Uh, they always don't keep the word uh, they are like that uh, low esteem about them for the public and they themselves also have a low dignity but they we say that you consider that we have 14 lakh drivers auto rickshaw drivers in kerala so we uh, tell them that if one, one hour you tell that we are not running for one hour the whole kerala will be what's called static because all auto rickshaw we cannot go to reach a, our destination we cannot reach a destination if there is no auto if we don't have a public vehicle uh, our own vehicle if you are traveling by bus we all and auto rickshaws are uh, uh, a vehicle which is uh, uh, for all the people all the age group all the, uh, the all people of the the, the society all strata uh, people are using auto rickshaws so we try to convince them that is a good job it's a, it's a we try to uh, give a self esteem for the job and that's the first thing self esteem i is for that we have a newsletter called ikya sarathi we publish good news because always newspapers and public uh, medias always present the auto rickshaw drivers as uh, not very good people so uh, we present in this newsletter all the good news about the uh, auto rickshaw drivers and uh, bring uh, try to uh, list uh, elevate their dignity of their labor and at present uh, so for father vargis kariperi put a very strong foundation for this and this built to this national office in tangamali because we started this ministry based on new airport kochi airport and now it is spread all over india all over uh, all over kerala and also some places in outside uh, kerala when i was i worked in delhi that time i work, started some uh, units for uh, cycle rickshaw police uh, in delhi and orissa and other uh, some places in maharashtra also so we have some 1 lakh 1.5 lakh members all over in all over kerala or majority are auto rickshaw drivers and all self help groups in each stand those who take the membership we give the life membership and those who are uh, taking the membership in one particular auto rickshaw stand we make a self help group Uh, with uh, some particular name for example sneha sarathi or vinaya sarathi or santhana sarathi like that we give a name and we make a self help group and start uh, bank account in their name the group the names uh, name of the group and we start savings and uh, for many groups now we have lakhs and lakhs of rupees in their account so that during this now last six months it's lockdown no auto uh, auto drivers are one of one group which are very difficult now because of the uh, covid 19 lockdown so many of our groups are saved because they have savings in the bank so they take the their uh, from their bank accounts because they have savings now and also we have distributed uh, we highly appreciate your service as the national coordinator and before becoming national coordinator you were with me in the seminary in our first prayer group and we were together visiting doing the present pilgrimage and with that experience you could uh, do great wonders miracles in different prisons not only in kerala all over india and also you extended your uh, 
um, this charism, this uh, spirituality, this fragrance to all over the world through international meetings and you are continuing that. We are happy about it. And thank you very much for your time and your presentation today. And we are very much uh, grateful and uh, we really enriched from your uh, thoughts. Thank you very much, Father. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. We, we shall now uh, end up with the prayer. Be my prayer.